the next uh, session uh, will be about uh, Brazil. Uh, when we are talking about uh, country brands, Brazil is, is a benchmark, an example of how to brand a country in the most uh, impactful uh, way. And uh, Brazil is also uh, going through a, a process of uh, strengthen strengthening their brand asset of uh, high tech. So uh, on the next session, for the next session, I would like uh, to invite uh, Stuart Simcha uh, Fund uh, from uh, KPMG Somechaiken, who is a partner and uh, at the Telecom and Media. Uh, So first of all, thank you very much for letting me have this opportunity. I um, rarely go to events where I r go to events that I see such a, uh, um, a small group of powerful people here that uh, normally you don't see at uh, other events. So yeah, very well done. Um, first, uh, also, uh, this topic is uh, actually very interesting. It's the uh, the topic that we're going to present now is the Brazil and Latin America, the future markets. And we have a very interesting lineup of speakers. Um, over the years here in Israel, we began mainly to think about the markets in the US, the, U uh, the EU, ASPAC, and of course, Africa. And we sometimes forget that there's another piece of, uh, of the American continent, which is the South America, uh, the Latin area, uh, Brazil in particular. And we don't usually uh, hear of, uh, of uh, high tech or anything going on in that particular country. And I think um, we, uh, ma we made a mistake. And we're going to hear shortly from uh, Her Excellency, the Honorable Maria Elisa Berniger, who is the Brazilian ambassador to Israel. Uh, she's going to speak on, the ambassador will speak on the Brazil, the land of opportunities. Um, the ambassador has held many posts in, here in Israel, in Madrid, in London, in Moscow, as well as the Brazilian mission to the United Nations in New York, uh, where there she specialized in administrative and financial matters. I think this will be a, an extremely interesting um, topic for us. Um, I think Israel has branded itself already. I think that um, uh, Brazil, in particular Latin America, is in the process of uh, branding, or maybe we'll even call it rebranding, and I think the less that I speak and the more that I let the experts speak, the better it is. So um, again, let's see here from, from uh, the Ambassador, Her Excellency, Maria Esther Bernhardt. Good afternoon. Do you, Boa want, tarde. This? Do you want this, maybe? Uh, might help what you. It? Yes. So, Haraim Tovim Lekulam. I've got my timer on, which happens to be a Brazilian flag. So I'll try and give it to you in a nutshell. I press here, right? This is next. This okay. is okay. Uh, I'll try and live up to what is expected of me here, which is quite daunting. I mean, branding Brazil isn't easy. After all, I've heard this afternoon. And uh, congratulations, Yael. Thank you very much, Danny, for your appreciation of our Brazilian shows and everything else. And special thanks to the introduction of our moderator, Stuart, and everyone else here. It's great to see you. I'm really excited to be here to be um, answering the call of um, Tzav Shmone Barcelona. Uh, it's my first time in front of this group. Um, Brazil has, quite, has been quite a lot, you know, on the front pages of the papers recently. Unfortunately, in recent times, there's a very, very sad tragedy, which we must also bear in mind, even at these times when we're thinking of something else. And I'm very, very touched by all the solidarity I received here in Israel for the victims of Santa Maria fire. But there are many sides to our country, as there are many sides to Israel. Uh, we have actually at present a population of over 190 million people. Our GDP in 2012 was $2.26 billion. And uh, we slipped from being sixth, the UK overtook us, to seventh world economy. But we, I'm happy to say, are doing quite well. In spite of the world crisis, we seem to have recovered. And uh, we're hoping for a growth forecast of 3.5 of our GDP in 2013. Now. What is the special thing which I'd like to share with you? 
is the growing middle class in Brazil. It's something we call social inclusion, which means bringing people in. When I went to school, I learned that the economy had to grow first. You have to have a bigger cake before you can slice it up. That was wrong, we found out, because in our recent governments, we managed to make the country stronger, to make the economy grow by slicing the cake up. With that, you got a bigger market and a virtuous circle. Now, in this connection, I have to admit that um, ICT, uh, I have it in Portuguese, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, information communication technology has played a very, very important role. Because at the same time that it is a growing market, it also brings people in and is a very powerful tool in social inclusion. So I'll just give you a few things on the ICT outlook in Brazil. Uh, the growth of a technology has really been exponential. It is both a motor and it creates demand. The market is huge. I mean, we had a tur turnover of $212 billion in 2011. And that is basically 8.5% of our GDP. That's pretty high. This is split up into 112 billion for communications and 100 billion for technology technology. So I think these figures speak for themselves as I hope the next slide will as well. Like our consumer market, okay? I think I mentioned we have a population of about 190 million. We have 91.6 million computers installed. So that makes roughly one computer for every two inhabitants. We are actually the third largest world market. And I think I slipped a size here. There we are, sorry. Uh, we are the third largest world market with 15.4 million PCs and laptops sold in 2011. Uh, also, as regards cell phones, we have more than 261 million. That means roughly 136 per 100 inhabitants, more cell phones than people. And we rank fourth among the world's largest markets. Now, we'll go back to that slide which we've seen before, the consumer market. Roughly 40% of homes have computer and internet access. To give you the exact figure, it's 41% of households have computers and 38% have internet access, but I think we can live with the 40% easier to remember. Uh, these are roughly 2011 numbers. So more than 80,000 million Brazilians use the internet and 35 million play digital games. If you take into account the bigger social networks in Brazil, which the most use are Facebook, Twitter, and our own Facebook, which used to be bigger than Facebook, not now, which is called Orkut, we have 134 million profiles. Now, this doesn't mean the market is saturated. There is still room for growth there, and quite a lot. There's an ongoing demand for IT for both business and for personal use. Uh, if you look, in spite of all these figures, if I'm not mistaken, it's 1.5% only of internet traffic like going to websites comes from smartphones. So that means there's lots of room for expansion. And the government has actually tried to give incentives to making more smartphones in Brazil uh, in several ways. But I'll get into that later when we speak about investments. Now, all this has clearly an effect on the overall economy and how transactions are conducted. If we're looking at 31, almost 40 million consumers, that's a lot. We are the fifth country in terms of time spent visits to online shopping. Uh, again, and I insist on this point, this is both a cause and an effect of the social and economic development in Brazil, of the emerging middle class. This emerging middle class, which accounts for 61% of sales on the internet. Now, 
If you look at banking, that's the second part there, we notice that almost a fourth of all banking activities are conducted through internet banking. And also that there has been a 25, 27% increase in IT investments in banking between 2009 and 2011. So we still have the financial sector leading this push in IT, leading the thrust. But other activities are increasing their demand, such as retail, manufacturing, services, health, education, tourism, energy, infrastructure, security, security, Israel, you name it. The demand is growing in Brazil. And uh, the big thrust really came from the greater use of um, wideband in mobile services. And uh, in two th this year and next year, we're moving up to 4G as well. Now, what has the government been doing in all this? I've spoken about the market, not the government. Uh, the government has a very important plan for us, uh, initiated by the Ministry of Science, Technology, and Innovation, which is called IT Mayor, which means the Greater Information Technology. Now, for this program, we're looking at a $250 million investment forecast between 2012 and, 2000, um, two, and 2015, in the first um, five years, in the first three years, sorry. Uh, these are the targets which we've outlined for 2022, which are basically, if you look at that, it's like a 50 to 100% increase in the GDP, which comes from information technology a tenfold increase in the values of our exports, and almost doubling the workplace positions in this sector. Uh, in case you should be interested, that is the website down there. It's um, TI Mayor, MCTI, we can give that to you later, uh, which has more details for this program. Now, how do we intend to reach these targets? There are very many instruments, and we hope to count with Israeli participation to get there. Uh, several investments in research and development, credit lines, uh, promoting startups, and that is really the big thing here. I'm sure you can help us with that. Uh, we are offering undergraduate scholarships. We hope to have 50,000 graduates by, um, in IT by 2014. And we really want to attract R&D centers to work with us. And that is a message which we hope will be heard here in Israel. Uh, you may have heard that next year we have these um, very big sporting event called the Mondial here, which is the World Cup. <laughs> uh, 2016, we have the Olympics. This year, we have the Confederations Cup. And so big investments are being made here uh, in several sectors, but also in IT and in communications as well, in ICT, I should say. What do we, how are we doing this? Um, one aspect is basically fiber optic connections within towns and between towns. So we're working with um, six major centers for the Confederations Cup, and then we're going to have 12 for the World Cup, and then joining all this up together. So we're using this infrastructure, we're hoping to keep it later on, and this will serve us for the next 20 years, hopefully. It is quite a task to get everything together. There's no doubt about that. Have all these big sporting events. There's a lot of work involved, and we do count on international cooperation and businessmen to help us in this. So I would wind up with a question. Where does Israel stand in all this? Um, there has been, I'm happy to say, a boom in Israeli investments uh, recently. If we look at period, eight years, 2001 to 2009, we had US 71 million in accumulated investments from Israel in Brazil. Only in 2011, this is one year, we had 70 million. So this really means things are exploding and that gives me great pleasure to see our partnerships growing in that way. The number of Israeli firms operating in Brazil has almost doubled in the past 10 years. It is now stands at about 180. I hope next year I can come here and say maybe more than 200. Partnerships and joint ventures are taking shape in telecom, biotechnology, agriculture, bio bioenergy. Uh, just as an example, a Brazilian firm called Padtech recently brought, bought Israeli Civcom. This was in 2011. 
for developing new optic fiber systems for telecom. And we've also had an important exchange of people. I would just mention two visits. One is a Brazilian secretary of security for major events who came to Israel to uh, visit the um, HLS, um, Homeland Security Conference, which is a really big event here in Tel Aviv. And the other should be happening shortly. It's the Israeli chief scientist is going to um, Brazil in March with a group of businessmen. And what they're really looking at is um, to get more proposals for the second call for offers within the framework of the agreement we have for cooperation in industrial R&D in the private sector. Summing up, Brazil opportunities. It's a pretty large market, you'll agree with me. Uh, we have economic and political stability. And we have this big middle class, new and avid consumers on board. It's really dynamic, it's teeming, it's there. So the key, if I might give a hint of all this, is get yourself a local partner. This will give you added benefits from Brazilian legislation. This will give you an in in Brazil, and this will really make things much, much smoother. Uh, we're looking at World Cup and Olympics, but we're also looking at a lot of other things that might stem from this. So thank you once again for this opportunity. I really enjoyed being here. I am enjoying listening to you. Uh, and I'm at your disposal. My colleagues at the embassy also who are here are at your disposal. And please come and see us at the embassy or wherever, because uh, we really would like to meet each one of you personally. So thank you very much indeed. Toda rabah. Obrigada.